call this meeting to order the uh, Haywarden City Council. It is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 at 530. Would like to welcome those that are here in the room and also those that are watching online. Our first agenda item is approval of the March 13th, 2024 City Council meeting minutes. Is there anything there or a motion? I make a motion to approve the March 13, 2024 minutes. Okay, Patty, and a second? Second. Rob, thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Passes five to zero. Thank you. And approval of the March 27, 2024 claims for payment. Any questions or discussion on that? If not, I would take a motion. I make a motion to approve the claims for payment. Okay. Patty with a motion and a second. A second. A Derek. Uh, any other further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes five to zero. Thank you. We're at 1C, open business from the com community. Um, if there is anyone here that would like to uh, address the council that's not already on the agenda, uh, you're welcome to step up and speak. Just introduce yourself if you would. Okay. I'm Dana Curiel. I've lived in Hayward my whole life. Um, I've been in my house for over 35 years. In all those years, I've never seen as many stray cats in my neighborhood as, and in the city of Haywarden as I do now. I have neighbors that feed stray cats. They leave their garage door open enough for cats to get in and out, and this, in my opinion, makes them theirs, not mine. These cats roam, especially at night. Right out, as of now, I believe there's about five of them. Two years ago, I had a cement driveway poured, and guess what? I have permanent cat prints in my driveway. On several occasions, I've had cat prints on my car. I see them in my yard, by my front door, like they own the place. I am not a cat owner, and I never want to be a cat owner. They are co a complete nuisance to me. These particular cats that I'm speaking of need to be brought to their home or taken away. Give them animal at large tickets times five every time these cats roam, which is daily. Haywarden doesn't have a stray po dog population. Dog owners are held accountable for their pets and they follow guidelines set in place. I have spoken with three council members and one law enforcement agent about this matter. I'm not sure what more I can do. What are my rights as a property owner? I don't like cats. I don't want them on my property. I believe our city needs to address the stray cat population. I have talked with several people in the community and I know I'm not alone in these feelings. There are many of us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your comments. Anyone else? If not, we'll move we on. More. Oh, oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sharon Jans. I would want to talk about the cat situation too. If, uh, if you want to feed the cats, you're going to attract other things besides cats, which happens to be the problem that we're having because we're attracting coons in our neighborhood. Last summer, we have caught two of them, which uh, were big and mean and shredded up a $50 garden hose. And my dogs are little, so if they encounter one of these coons, they're not going to have a chance against them coon, about the coons. And <clears throat> one thing about uh, <clears throat> the cats is I have rhubarb and asparagus. They want to use it as a litter box. I eat that stuff. I don't want them using it as a litter box. So I put a four-foot fence around it. So now they don't go in there. Now they use my flower bed instead. So, and stray cats, they carry diseases. They carry fleas and ticks. So when they're roaming around the, your yard, they're going to deposit the fleas and ticks in your yard, which your pet is going to go out and play in. 
I know I use flea and tick preventative, but they're still gonna pass it around the neighborhood. So my deal is if you're gonna feed them, they're gonna come. Okay. Thank you for your comments, Sharon. Hi, Tom Murray. Um, I have a, about the same problems that they're having. Um, a couple weeks ago, I caught a possum in one of my uh, live traps, but I'm trying to catch these wild uh, uh, animals too. And uh, well, the cats come into my carport and they piss all over in there, and then you can smell it in the house because that's connected to the house. Well, something needs to be done about these stray cats and. I hope we brought it to your attention. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You have. Thank you, Tom. Anyone else? If not, we will move on to the agenda. The mayor's report. Um, I received a letter from the uh, West Sioux administration. I'd like to read. It's uh, said, "Dear Mayor Greg and the Haywarden City Council." We are writing to express our heartfelt appreciation for the exceptional support and swift response we received from the Haywarden Police Department, specifically Cody Brotherson and the Sioux County Sheriff's Department in the wake of the recent threat situation at the West Sioux Middle High School. The collaborative efforts and immediate response from our local law enforcement was paramount in the handling of the situation and we are immensely grateful for the dedication and professionalism demonstrated by the officers involved during the incident and the days following. <clears throat> Obviously, the safety and well-being of our students and staff are of utmost importance, and the prompt action taken by Officer, Officer Brotherson and the Sioux County Sheriff's Department played a pivotal role in ensuring the security of our school community. Their expertise and efficiency were evident as they helped us evacuate the building on Tuesday and then afterwards as we conducted our investigation. We also appreciated their support as we debriefed and received feedback on our safety protocols. We look forward to continued cooperation between the West Sioux School District and our local police departments. Together we are certain we can continue to implement proactive measures to further enhance the safety protocols within our school and community. Once again, we are thankful for the, their exemplary response and support during this critical situation. Their dedication to the safety and well-being of our school community is truly commendable. Sincerely, Steve Grand, Superintendent, Alin Kopic, Principal, Adam McVeigh, Dean of Students. I appreciate that letter. That's all I have for my report. We will move on to staff reports. Jacob. I actually have uh, nothing new to report from last meeting. Okay. Gary. I, ha I have nothing tonight, Larry. Okay. Uh, and Travis is not here. Carol. Um, just a few things. We are continuing our work on the Haywarden Foundation grants. The final date of application is April 15th. So if anyone would like to put in a grant, a nonprofit organization, or other public service organization, I'd be happy to help with that. Um, we are currently scoring the Siouxland Sioux County grants right now. So other than that, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Jenny. Okay. We're on to council comments. We'll open that up to any council member that wishes to comment at this time. I have none. Okay. I have none. We will move on to the other agenda items. Number three, we've got a presentation for trap, neuter, return. My name is Jane Versteg, and my husband and I have lived in Haywarden for about, about nine or 10 years now. And we live in the Frog Pond area of town. When we moved there, I've always, been a cat lover, a pet lover. I've had horses and dogs and cats. Um, but when we moved to uh, to Haywarden and to um, Frog Pond specifically, 
I noticed all night long the cats fighting and screaming. I just, it was horrible. Our cats were restless. We, we were just having an awful time. We didn't know what to do. I started talking to the neighbors. It wasn't them. They, all the neighbors had cats, but they kept them in. It wasn't their cats. So um, I started, I decided I have heard of TNR before, trap, neuter, and return, that I would do that in that area. I didn't think that I needed to ask permission from the city to do it on feral cats. And my neighbors were all very supportive of me doing it. So I went about setting the traps, feeding the cats where they'd come and eat. Um, and they ate where some of the neighbors put food and where I would leave food. And I, I don't know how many. Total in the last nine years, I've well over 350 cats that I have trapped, spayed, and neutered at my expense, and another 300 to 400 that I have taken in and that have been gentle and easy to rehome. I rehome them easily in the Waterloo, um, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City corridor. After they're spayed, neutered, and vaccinated, I post them on Craigslist and um, get calls and have a long list of questions that I talk to people about, and then I place the cats and deliver them. Our daughter and son-in-law live in Cedar Rapids, so I get to spend the weekend with them, and that's why I started using that area. I tried around here and in Sioux City, Sioux Falls, was not getting good homes, was not getting good response. A few, but mostly people didn't seem to want them. So, but they definitely wanted them where I went. So, and I did find good homes around here too. There are several excellent homes. So anyway, then I, um, I've been doing that and that's uh, where I've um, been coming from. Now, we've, I've noticed also that there are several other areas of town and downtown and cats in and out of gutters and just too many cats. And it just kind of breaks my heart to see those animals. They, they don't look healthy. They really don't look very good at all, but they're trying to survive just like a lot of, like the birds and the squirrels and you know other animals that come into our community. So I have done that trapping and neutering that I told you, that TNR program. I have been a member of Alley Cat Allies for many years. It's an organization that's a big organization throughout the country. There are also a lot of, I've talked to shelters in, um, and TNR prog projects. When I say TNR, that's trap, neuter, and return. By neuter, it's neuter the males, spay the females, and return. Clipping their left ear so people know it. Um, so I've talked to all these, or several organizations, just about every town in Iowa has that problem. The only way people get on top of it a little bit and, and start getting a manageable population is the TNR program. If you go in and trap all of them and take them out and kill them or whatever, if you bring them to a farm, they won't stay. I've tried four large groups to farms in, near Orange City and Hospers and um, Akron and, well, and another one. But they don't stay. Their home is here. This is where they find shelter and this is where they get food. Um, food can be from anybody and I'll bet just about every second or third house in town somebody puts out a little plate of food when they see a hungry cat. It's not ideal. It is not ideal. What we want is somebody to feed them in a, uni in a place, central place, and we can go in and set the traps. I would, I make um, appointments with my veterinarian in Sioux Center. She gives me a very good price. I, we tra set the traps and it's an ongoing thing. We can, sometimes we have done I've done like seven, eight, ten at a time. That's just almost overwhelming for me. But I can do two at a time and then keep coming back and keep at it. People are going to feed. They're called caretakers, and that's what these people have told me at the shelters I talked to. The one in Sioux City, 
three other in small town Iowa that have an overabundance of cat had, but they've used TNR to get it un under control. If you completely clean the cats out, something takes place that, um, that is very well documented, mented, and proven. It's a vacuum effect. Within two or three years, the, the, the cats will be fully the same population because the people still are there. And oh, there's, there's one of them, and they put a little food out. So anyway, that's that's what uh, that's the only way that you can control the numbers the only way killing them is just kind of an inhumane thing i think most people would feel that way we have heard that and i hope this isn't true that well and i saw myself in the paper when we first moved that the veterinary clinic had a huge bill with the city that was paid i couldn't believe it it's taking in the cats and euthanizing the cats. Well, um, they can also, they, I, they stopped doing that. I guess they got sick of that expense. So they would take trapped cats. I understand from two people out to the country and release the cats and shoot them, the police. Target practice, kind of, which people, most people in town would be horrified. You can't get them all. You wound some. They're terrified. If you, if you appreciate animals, it kind of leaves a sick lump in your stomach to think that they're treated that way. But there are too many. And my feeling is that we need a TNR. And I have done that, as I told you how many I've done. I would like to uh, ongoing it with Brenda, um, who's going to talk in just a minute about some of the things she's doing. She feeds in a couple places. And then I would, as she and I, we've done this last year. We, last year actually, we started late in the year. We got five females and one male trapped, spayed and neutered, vaccinated. We also treat them for fleas and ear mites. I do and worms. I, I just take it on myself. All this, I don't ask for any money for it. It's my passion, my hobby. That's what I want to do, and I'm more than willing to do it. Um, so anyway, so then Brenda would feed, or that's what we did last year at a certain place by the um, railroad tracks. We set traps on it. We looked at the weather. We ma made appointments with my vet. How many can you take that day? Can we bring in two or three? And we got started, got those five females. Female cats in the wild have about two litters a year, one in spring and one in the evening. That's 10 litters that we won't have this year because of those five females we got. The males are um, part, of the, part of the program too, of course. But um, so the benefits of it, the males and the female, there's, you don't, don't hear that screaming and crying, that breeding sounds fighting all the time. That's what we noticed in Frog Pond. After I got like 100, 150, we noticed that there wasn't, that wasn't going on. People started telling me, I don't see as many cats in the gutters either, running to the gutters. There are still are some living there, but, um, but the people have thanked me and have noticed that there are far less of them. And so um, anyway, I feel like I've, we've been successful a big part of it is Brenda's willingness to get out there and feed, and they stay in that area. Once they are trapped, spayed, neutered, vaccinated, their left ear is tipped, so if we ever get them again, we see that, we release them, reset the trap, and wait for another one to get in. This happens now and then. It's no big deal. We just plot on forward. Um, it's, so, uh, but Brenda gets them to places I, I have, I think I have, four traps now they're in good working order set those traps when we get a cat we cover it up and I take them right into the vet because I have appointments made we have them spayed and neutered I bring them right back when they're wide awake I release them where I trapped them because that's their home cats in a home like that if we get keep continue getting them um, spayed and neutered they become a uh, stable force in the neighborhood. 
They don't fight and the breeding sounds anymore. Um, once in a while you hear a squabble, but that's nothing. Um, and uh, let's see. <laughs> um, so um, having a mental freeze. Anyway, the, uh, okay, so the, the cats, once they're spayed and neutered, so they're healthier. There are a lot of, I think it's zomatic diseases that cats can carry and pass on um, to people. But these cats, once they've been trapped and brought in, they get vaccinated for rabies, which is a wonderful thing, and also for distemper, a three-way vaccine, and they get the ear and, and um, flea treatment also. Those, are, those zomatic things are a problem, so we want to keep the, keep the cats under control. They're not a huge problem. There are m towns with much bigger problem. Really, Haywarden has been pretty fortunate with healthy cats, but there are sick ones around too, and we just don't want to perpetuate that. Um, so we um, get them in the, we trap them, spay them, return them, and if they are tame, we try and find out if it's a homed cat or watch if check with people if it might be their cat. But otherwise, um, we, we release them where they are. If they're very nice cats, we can take them and I can rehome them. Uh, it, it's a, quite a project to take on a lot of cats like that, but I'm willing to do it. And there are so many people that have appreciated it so much and thank, thanked me. I walked around, once I knew I was coming, I wanted to invite people, it wasn't much notice, invite them to come tonight just to show us their support. And people were, I told them what, that people just don't want the cat back. They don't care if we trap, trap them, but they just don't want them back. And they said, what do they want to do with them? What do they, what do we, if we trap, spay, and neuter, they will hold their territory they will be quiet, their diseases will be much less, they will stay and keep away their territorial animal, they'll keep away other cats that want to roam into their, um, into their territory, and the number just drops exponentially. It's as much, much unbelievable how many fewer there are, but it needs the TNR. If you just feed, you're going to have problems. You can't just feed. It has to be trap, spay, neuter, vaccinate. And I think that's essentially what I wanted to say. I have talked to so many shelters. They, the people say, well, what do they want to do? Just kill them all? Or what are you supposed to do with them? That kind of thing. We have a plan, and the plan is going to cause much more livable circumstances. As more cats, if more cats show up in that colony, we will trap them, spay and neuter them, we we'll go through the whole thing. We will, it's an ongoing thing. You just, you don't go in and do it all at once and the thank people you. that. Thank you, Jane. Okay, thank th you. I think that's, I've done my part. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Brenda. Brenda. Hi guys, my name is Brenda Finch, been a lifelong resident of Haywarden, um, and I've always had the same passion for any creature hurting. Mr. Glock, he knows that about the turkey buzzard. <laughs> and so what we want to do is um, get permission at places to trap. Like I have permission from the railroad. I had permission from the land plant to do feeding there. And um, then you won't violate anybody's property or just go in and do it. Um, but let's see here. Because we feed the birds and the squirrels and rabbits and deer and different things. And I don't know what makes the cats so... Um, detestable to people they all have issues 
birds poop on your sidewalk, uh, whatever, but we're trying to make a difference and keep coming up against the police stopping me from doing it. And the Humane Society would have came in well, five years ago, but it would have been a little bit of the cost of the city. Corey Utesh said, no, we won't do that. And um, let's see, um, I mentioned to Mr. Brotherson three weeks ago that we would um, have help coming in and we could get it, um, the cats released back, released back where? To the, to the community where they came from. And no, we're not having that. Well, what Jane said is the vacuum effect and it's true. It really is and my neighbor he gets raccoons and possums in his traps and he just takes them out to the river and lets them go um, humanely and of course you're going to run into other animals and they're going to come into your garages and they're going to come in to have some tolerance we're to be stewards of this earth not just to think of ourselves and our property yeah it takes a little bit of cleanup yeah okay I'm sorry, call me, I will come clean it up. I mean it. And I just think we have to have some compassion as human beings. Um, people have called me to come get an animal and I take it in. At least they're doing something and not nothing. And you know, if we all walk around not doing anything about life or our property, it all, it, things negative happen. And we just have to know um, it's, not just our world. It isn't. Okay. I think Thank I got you, Brenda. everything covered. Thank you. Thanks. And Brenda was told to remove a box that she was using for feed to keep the food dry. Yeah, yeah to keep the food dry. Somebody was too, just out of the goodness of their heart. I should shut up on you. But I don't want to get up there again. I'll never get away. <laughs> <laughs> the goodness of their heart. So um, I'll tell you, this town is full of things that can be cleaned up and tidied up before a clean little cat box sitting by the railroad tracks that's used to feed six, eight cats. And they're probably, most of them, spayed and neutered already in that group. Okay, well, I, I will promise you that we will have some discussions about the cats. And I don't know if, if the council wants to comment at this time, but... Um, we will definitely look into it, and we understand that there's issues. So I, I want to thank you for all the information. It's um, I didn't realize, you know, the degree of all of it. I know there's uh, cat problems on, you know, people's at their homes, they, and we've had complaints years ago about that kind of thing too. Um, but I learned something with trap and neuter and return and what you ladies have been doing, but I also understand, you know, people at their homes, you know, when they get too many wild cats around their home, they are a nuisance. So I definitely will look in this, discuss it, like Larry said. Yeah, when this come up, I looked on the internet, there is a lot of information out there, some good, some bad. So it's gonna take a little bit to sort through some of that. Of course, feeding always encourages wildlife and other things to come into your property that you might not want, so, but. Thank you for all Thank that. You. That's a lot. Uh, we're going to move on now to other agenda items. Um, yeah, we've got number four. We've got a resolution 2024 12, setting a public hearing and ordering a notice of publication to consider proposed changes to the Code of Ordinances by amending electric utility rates and fees. Resolution to set the public hearing for next meeting public hearing will be April 10th um, Jacob you want yep this will just be the public hearing uh, for the public to come in and state anything that they want to about our ordinance change that we're doing for the electric rates that we will have next meeting okay. I'll make a motion to uh, pass resolution 2024-12 to set the public hearing Thank you, and a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, we'll start with uh, Clucky. Aye. Warner. Aye. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Harvey. Okay, passes four to one. Thank you. Moving on to number five. This is the second reading of Ord Ordinance 750. It's an ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Hayward, Iowa, 2011, by amending provisions pertaining to electric rates. Jacob. Just the second reading to the ordinance that we've already uh, started. So. Okay. Comments or a motion? I make a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 750. Thank you. And a second? I'll second that. Rob? Any further discussion? If not, we'll start with Warner. Aye. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Harvey. Clucky. Aye. Passes four to one. Thank you. Number six, resolution 2024 13, setting salary for finance officer. I'm going to go down to this resolution. Okay. So uh, this is to set the salary for Tracy taking on the finance officer role. Um, and her biweekly salary would be 24 23 40. Shouldn't we have included in the resolution to approve her as interim city administrator, you know, effective when you leave? Uh, no, not necessarily. And when you get back? Or? Yeah, when I come back. So this will be uh, in talks with her. This is only an interim position through her. Um, if I come back and I go back into the finance officer position, then she would fall back into her other position. I mean, like, this is... Um, we haven't appointed her yet, though. I no, don't you have guys any, don't have to appoint her. I don't have any problem with, uh, you know, I expect her to fill mm -hmm. that position when you're gone, for sure. Correct. You guys don't have to appoint her to that position. You just have to approve the salary. When she serves as it, you mean? Mm-hmm. Is that right, Jenny? I want to make sure I'm, yeah. Okay. Move. Okay. Moved by Rob. I'll second, second it. Second by Patty. Any further discussion? Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Harvey. No. Clucky. Aye. Warner. Aye. Passes four to one. Thank you. Number seven, setting um, the date and time for a property tax hearing. Sorry, let's take them notes. That's fine. All right. So um, with the new uh, state law that's going through, we have to have a separate meeting next meeting just for the public hearing for the property tax hearing as most of you probably know by now you got a letter in the mail from the county that uh, gets all the rates for your taxable area for your property so most of us should be it'll be like the county and the school and the cities on there and then on the back side it has what it'll be if your house was uh, valued at a hundred thousand dollars as an example um, it's not the um, easiest to understand but we just have to have a public hearing uh, for the public to come and have a chance to express their opinion over our um, our rate okay. so just got to set the public hearing for next meeting and okay. it will be its own standalone meeting so next on April 10th we will actually have two meetings we will open it have the public hearing close it and then open our regular meeting right after it because that's the way that the law reads. I did receive that, that from the county, and I know there's some changes where they're providing information on all those entities you said. Hmm. Um, I would make a motion to set a public hearing for a property tax hearing. Do we, do we need a motion? Motion second, and then a voice vote. Okay. I'll second. Patty and Christy got the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes five to zero. Thank you. Uh, number eight, approve bank signature authority for Gary Tucker and Tracy Ranking uh, to, and remove the authority for Wanda Woodley for People's Bank in Rivers Edge. So moved. Uh, second it. Second. In, uh, any discussion? It's routine. Yeah. And it's just voice vote as well. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Five to zero, thank you. And we are down to adjournment. Motion? Motion to adjourn. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes five to zero. Thank you. We are adjourned and the next regular council meeting is April 10th. Thank you again for attending. Thank you.